Today, I am standing amongst broom sedge plants. They go by a host of names, and some people will hear in about a couple weeks, it's gonna turn this bright orange bronze color. Some people look at it and say, it's beautiful. It looks like amber waves of grain. And other people look at it with a look of hatred because of what it signifies about the soil and the plant community that's growing there. Uh, when your phosphate is not very high, your, the amount of phosphorus in the soil is not good, the lime levels are not good, the pH is low. This actually is quite discouraging to other plants, but the broom sedge really thrives in that situation. And so it's a sign in like fields, you know, hay fields or pastures that the fertility of the field is not very good. And so it's not a very well-loved plant in agriculture oftentimes, but there's actually quite a few different uses for it. For a restoration project, uh, where the goal is to restore a prairie, a glade, a savanna. These plants can have a purpose in that they're an early colonizer. So they come on quick, um, and then with time, they tend to disappear from the system. They're not as deep rooted as say a big blue stem or a little blue stem. And so they disappear from the system. In the meantime, they give you if a controlled burn. If you wanna do a controlled burn, they give great fuel for the controlled burn because this plant has the tall stem, but then at the base, there is like leafy vegetation down there and that will really carry a fire well. So it has a real purpose in colonizing a new planting, a new um, situation where a planting is being done. So it can be a great addition to, in a small part, um, to one of these restorations. A really common use for it as well is to like prevent erosion. So because it grows on such low fertility sites, it's something that we can use in those sites. Say we have an old field that doesn't have anything growing on it and maybe we want to establish some wildflowers or something in there. We can plant the broom sedge with them. Um, maybe we have a road cut that has a lot of exposed clay, you know, is not good soil. We can plant broom sedge on that. We can plant broom sedge, say on a mining or dirt work situation where we have exposed subsoil. So those low fertility situations, this grass is really gonna shine, give you ground cover, and that's what prevents erosion. Both the roots, it has a shallow, fairly shallow root system, but that root system is gonna hold that soil. And then also the vegetation prevents the raindrops from hitting the soil directly to cause that soil erosion. So erosion control is yet another use of it. So wildlife actually find use in this grass. Um, the seeds, let's take the seeds. The seeds are eaten by some birds. The seed has a rather meaty part on it, aside from the fluff that makes the seed float. But that meaty part of that seed, there's various birds that enjoy it. And three that we know of that enjoy it are the slate-colored junco, the field sparrow, and the tree sparrow. Another great application for this in wildlife habitat is the old dead vegetation. So this old vegetation, this is from last year and it would have still been standing this spring. And as it stands in the spring, a quail can use this as cover, a turkey. So they can also nest underneath it, near it. And so it gives great structure for the animals, these birds, ground nesting birds, the grassland birds, to get in under, nest, find cover. And so that's another good reason to include it in a wildlife habitat planting. A use that I would not have thought of would be that there's a certain butterfly that uses this for its caterpillars, the larval stage of the butterfly, to eat on. And so the Zabulin skipper is a butterfly that uses it. There's a lot of other insects that also feed on these plant, on the broom sedge plant. And maybe one of the most interesting that we've come to observe since we do have the bison now at our place is that the bison actually like it fairly well. So when it's young through the growing season, so let's say, you know, once it greens up in May or June, and then it grows through, oh, say August, when it starts to throw up the seed head, it loses a lot of palatability. But until then, it makes the bison really quite relish it. Um, and then again, interestingly, during the winter, they find it tasty again. Right now, this is not very tasty right here, this stuff, but as we get into winter, the leaves, this is gonna turn that bronze orange color, 
and you have the basal leaves down at the base, this little fountain or tuft of leaves coming out of the ground. That tuft of leaves will be brown, orange, that bronze orange color. And then it has some green parts in it. And that actually picks up the quality quite a bit as far as the bison are concerned. They're getting some stuff with a higher protein content. They will end up eating some of the big tall stems uh, just because they're getting it in their mouth. But what they're really after is that basal tuft of, of leaves because it has that greenery in it. So the bison actually find it to be palatable. The deer eat it some. Um, I imagine elk would as well. But then that leads me to the thought of, okay, in agriculture, we don't really like it. It's a sign of poor fertility. We think of it as poor forage, but do cattle actually graze it? And there was a guy in our grazing group, Leon and Helen Chrysler, they had a farm and they raised cattle and they had this, they had bought, it was a 40. They bought this and it was just covered with broom sedge. And he thought, you know, I'm gonna make lemonade out of lemons. I'm just gonna graze this, see how it works. So he put some stalkers over there and it actually became where he put his stalkers every year to graze during the summer and they would get sleek and fat. So it really made great forage. The thing he had to watch is to make sure it didn't go reproductive. When a plant sticks up a seed head, the quality of the forage is declining. And so he would actually mow it a couple times, mow it high, so he wasn't cutting off the forage he was wanting his livestock to consume. But he would mow it a couple times during the growing season to keep it vegetative. And he got great gains on it. It was really excellent stalker forage. And that, it, it, like, having grown up around an agricultural community, like, that is not what we think of with broom sedge. In fact, everybody's like, my cows won't eat that. And I think the difference in what we're seeing here is that once it turns the bronze orange color that we can all identify, the cattle don't eat it. But when it's green and leafy and kind of nondescript and it's hard to tell it from the next thing, that's when the livestock eat it. So it's hard to tell that. It's a whole lot easier if you turn your cows into a pasture and all of a sudden all the orange things are gone. We could tell that they were eating that. But in this case, that's not how it works. They eat it when we can't see it, when we can't identify it as easy. And then we're not realizing what's going on. So I think that's where a lot of the discrepancy is. Now, it's not one that I would, I don't think it's a one of the best forage producers. It's not one of the best native warm season grasses that I would plant for forage. But it also, in some amount, doesn't really bother me in a field. I just think we can get more productive grasses. But if that's all that that field would grow, and that field of the Chryslers, like that is what it was growing. It had been abused so much in the past, and the fertility was so low, that that is what it was capable of growing at that point without fertility additions. In that sort of situation, I wouldn't be scared of it as a livestock forage. One use of this grass is aesthetics. So it is, right now it's started, it's thrown up its seed head. It is an upright grass. It doesn't get too tall. These are fairly good tall uh, broom sedge and they are, you know, four foot tall. Um, so it's relatively short in the scheme of things, but it can make a little a bit of a cover, a screen where you can't see through it too well. And then in the fall is when it really shines. Here in a couple weeks, it's gonna turn this bright orange, bronze color and especially like after a rain on a really dreary day you look out at the broom sedge and it's just beautiful color in my opinion and of course beauty's in the eye of the beholder so some people don't think it's that pretty but that is why it's used in like landscaping as an ornamental grass another part of the landscaping picture is that it has a low water requirement so it doesn't require good fertility it doesn't require a lot of water and so if it's an area where, like on a golf course or somewhere where it's not gonna be irrigated, that's just fine. The broom sedge will do just fine in that sort of situation. Another thing when it turns that beautiful orange color is you can use it to make like fall decorations. You can cut it, make a dried bouquet, um, bring that beauty into your house if that's a beauty that you enjoy. I suppose if all else fails and you can't find any other good use for this, you can go back to the historical uses and you can make yourself a broom of it you get the stems and bundle them together and you can make a broom, or you can go for its use in the whiskey industry as packing peanuts. So I suppose it could be our green alternative to packing peanuts. I'm Elizabeth with Hamilton Native Outpost. 
We're really passionate about native plants at Hamilton Native Outpost, where we get the privilege of raising native grass and wildflower seed. Thanks for watching.